Hey everybody, how you doing? So, I'm sitting here in my car, about to head to family get-together for Thanksgiving. So, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. And I thought I'd do a little experiment. I have a little setup that I put in my car for testing my loafer transmitter. And I don't really use it much anymore. Uh, I've got everything working really good. I need to do an update video on the transmitter and, and the changes I've made. But, since I'm going to be driving a good ways away, I think it's 25 miles, it looked like, on Google Maps. Um, I thought it'd be a good test, just to just an experiment to see if this receiver setup can pick up my transmitter that far away. So let me show you what I have. Okay, so first off, this is a little loop antenna I got from Radio Shack years ago. It's for the AM band, and uh, it has an adjuster. It has a tuning adjustment on the front. It's just a variable capacitor inside, so I put a capacitor in parallel with it and brought it down to the loafer band. So I think it gets the full band, 160 to 190 kilohertz, but you can see a little red mark right there and that's where I set it and that tunes it into my transmitter around 182 kilohertz. Next up is the Loafer Amplificator 200. It's an early model but it does have lightning bolts and skulls on it so it works pretty good. This is the gain adjustment pretty much turn that one all the way up. The loop antenna plugs into here and then that goes into my radio and the antenna input. I do have this other antenna input that I've experimented with um, you know, a whip antenna, a CB whip antenna, and a couple other home built antennas, but this loop antenna has by far been the best. Next is the receiver. So it's a Grundig G3 Global or Globe Traveler. It uh, works really good. Um, the problem with this radio, and, and I think everybody's is like this, I don't think this is just a flaw with mine, is there's some kind of user interface issue. So sometimes you push a button and it really pushes the one beside it, which is really annoying. Um, especially when you're trying to go in and out of sideband, it'll try to put it in sync sideband or, or put it back into AM mode or whatever. But um, other than that, it's really good radio, super sensitive. I've, I've enjoyed it. I've modified it. I have an eighth inch phone jack input here, and basically that just runs down to the loop antenna, the ferrite loop antenna built into it, and just has I don't know three or four turns on it, just so that I can transfer the antenna's energy from the amplifier onto the, the loop antenna on the inside. Next up, okay, so the other problem with this one, I would think this is completely normal, is it does have single sideband, which is required in order to pick up a CW wave, which is what my transmitter outputs. But, and you can adjust it here, so if we cut it on, we could turn this knob and you'll hear the tone change, but it drifts a lot. And not necessarily audibly drifts, so I mean for communication, listening to people talk on the radio and stuff, it'd work great. But whenever we're open up Argo, you'll see you only have a window of, you know, I don't know, 10 hertz, maybe even 5 hertz, you know, to, to view the signal. So it's pretty important that we keep it stable enough to where it doesn't go off the window because we're not going to be sitting here with the, with the computer. Um, so we want it to, to stay on, on frequency. So I made this BFO, which is basically just an oscillator. It oscillates at 183.831 kilohertz and has a little tiny just loop of wire inside of it. I probably have a resistor on it just to kind of create a small, you know, radio signal that it can use as a reference for my loop antenna. So I put my radio, I mean, reference for my, for my transmitter frequency so I, I put my radio in AM mode and then I plug this up it's just powered off a of USB so I power it off with a laptop and I put it near the receiver and that's good enough to make that work so this is super stable so we don't have to worry about frequency drift or anything I have a couple cables here next up I have this little next book 7 inch mini laptop it's a really good laptop for this um, the problem with this particular laptop is it's a tablet that comes off of the keyboard so you can remove the tablet from the keyboard and that connection is a little intermittent sometimes I've read online some people are like that some people aren't Could probably work on it and fix it but okay so this doesn't have a microphone input so I have a little sound card with an adapter to bring it to micro USB and that's how I, what I use to get the radios uh, line out into the computer so that I can run it into Argo so I'm going to set this up real quick and show you. It's going to be 
really overloaded because my transmitter is just right on the other side of those trees over there but then I'll cut it off so that whenever I get where I'm going everything will already be set up and we could just cut it on and um, it will log while I'm you know hanging out with the family and then whenever I get back at some point the laptop will probably die we'll bring it home and we will go back and look at the logs and see what we got okay so everything's set up you can see I got the loop antenna back in the back window that's where I usually keep it and plugs into the amplificator and then to the radio with the BFO sitting next to it but for those are plugged into the laptop and the screen's a bit hard to see but you probably see there's my signal come across the screen right there so everything's set up I'm gonna cut it all back off and we get back to where I'm going I'll cut it back on and um, we'll run a logger I don't know if I'll show any footage there but um if I see something interesting, I might might do something. But if not, then I'll catch you when I get back here, and we'll take a look at the logs. Okay, so I'm here, and I've had it running about 30 minutes, and you can see it's starting to show up right there. I was a bit worried that it wouldn't work. See, I got the antenna angled up here. I've got it adjusted to point towards my house, but my house is not that way. It's actually this way. So I was worried about it having to go actually through the house, and these couple houses here blocking it or you know having to go through the car also not being right out the back window but it seems to be getting through so that's a good sign anyways we'll check it whenever I get back home alright so I'm back at the house and I must say I'm surprised at how well this worked I really thought I thought I'd get something I didn't uh, I didn't think it would be as clear as it is I mean that's a perfect reception I kinda wanna you know go a little farther and see exactly at what point it, it quits working um, so let's, you know, quickly go through here. You can see, um, yeah, absolutely no problem. The entire time I was there, it was picking up everything. There's, you can see a little bit of, of a wave here, frequency drift. I don't know if that's my transmitter or just that BFO in the car. Like I said, I just kind of threw it together, so it's not necessarily the correct components but yeah the whole time I was there it was coming in just fine let's skip to the end so right here say about right here is when I left the family get together and started heading home and it was working so well I decided I'd just leave it on now whenever um, for the drive home now whenever my car cranks up there's a lot of noise created by the by the car itself probably mostly the engine the ignition system but other things you know radio and stuff like that and it uh generally makes it where I where I you know my signal gets drowned in the in the noise but it seemed to continue working you can let me get a couple a little farther along you can see it kind of faded out but you can still tell that's dot dash 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 the dots here were kind of lost but that's probably whenever I had the car perpendicular to the transmitter and um, so of course the loop antenna is directional so if you're you have to be pointing in the direction of the loop when you have a, a small loop in order to pick up the signal and yeah whenever I was driving home it's kinda of pretty much the whole time was pointing towards my house and yeah it came through pretty good and then this is pretty much when I got home you can see it was pretty overloaded so yeah Pretty great results. Um, really surprised. Like I said, I tried this last year and uh, got nowhere near as great of results. And I really thought it would do pretty well until I actually got there and realized that it had to go through, you know, actually through houses and and through my car to get there. I figured the, you know, the inside of the car, the roof, and the and the rest of the body would kind of shield most of it. Like it'd pretty much have to come through the windows. And then all the houses in the way, I, I really thought I was at a disadvantage and it wasn't going to work. But man, I feel like we could have probably sped it up and got some got some, some pretty quick data. You know, actually maybe enough bandwidth to do something useful with. So, But anyway, I um, thought I'd share my, my mobile setup. That's my testing setup. It was very valuable whenever I first got my transmitter built for um, confirming that things improved the ERP of the antenna it's probably you know a milliwatt at best maybe two milliwatts really low 
really low ERP based off of the disadvantages with the the size of the antenna. But um, yeah, super super satisfied with my results. And thanks for watching.